Kia ora. Welcome to TV News. I'm Debbie. And I'm Aaron. In today's stories, a new crime wave is sweeping the country in the form of woolly graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. We will help them find it. And the latest in the weather around the country, but first, a story that will turn your world upside down. If you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house, and before you think they may have read the plans upside down, they did it on purpose. The wacky abode was built as a tourist attraction. As well as being a comment on the state of the world, the house is 23 feet tall and rests on its roof and has steel beams in the attic. Inside the house, there are beds screwed into the ceiling, upside-down wardrobes, an upside-down kitchen, and even an upturned bathroom, though it's not known if anyone has tried to have a bath in it or go to the toilet. Normally, a house like this would take three weeks to build. This one took over four months because the workers kept getting confused by the strange angles of the walls. Many tourists visiting the house complained of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few minutes inside. Jeremy. Okay. Thanks, Debbie. I'm here with the owner of how of the house, Han, and I'm feeling quite upside down. So, what made you decide to build this upside down house? Oh, well, I'm quite an upside down person, and everything about me is upside down. So, I thought, why not as well make my house upside down? What comment do you feel the house makes about the state of the world? I don't know. Nothing really. Just tells you about me and what I do. What are some of the challenges of living in a house where everything is upside down? Oh, you can't really see the TV. Everything, everyone's upside down. Do you think you could last the winter... While living in this upside down house? Of course I can. It's a very good house. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jeremy for Capital East News. Back to you, Debbie, in the studio. Thanks, Jeremy. Even watching that turns my world upside down. And now for a story that is truly out of sight. Look out, Harry Potter. The world of science is catching up to the world of magic. Scientists in, the Europe, in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloak which can hide objects by bending light waves. It has been found that light can be controlled using special tiny crystals that make objects disappear. So far, scientists have made small objects such as coins disappear, but hope that it won't be long before they are hiding cars, planes and even people. People have always dreamed of making themselves invisible. One top scientist says the possibilities are endless and we are very excited. However, since inventing the invisibility cloak, the scientists have been having trouble finding it. As soon as we put it down somewhere, it has been disappeared. The inventor of the cloak said it appears that uh, they are having trouble finding other things too, like their lunch, which they think may be underneath the cloak. What will this invention actually be used for? Hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloak, here is our on-the-spot reporter, Taylor, with more on this story. Hi, I'm Taylor, and here with me is Ben. One of, one of the scientists that invented the invisible cloak. Hi Ben, and thanks for joining us today. What you, what made <laughs> you want to invent the invisible cloak? I like that movie Harry Potter. Can you show me how the invisible cloak works? You just put it over you and it disappears like that. What do you hope the cloak will be used for? Breaking into people's houses. 
How long did it take you to How long did it take you to invent the visible cloak? Two years. Well, that makes everything very clear. Thanks for joining us and we're out of the time for over to you Debbie in the studio. Thanks, Taylor. And now, how's this for an interesting yarn? What are you doing? A new wave of graffiti f crime is covering the country, thanks to an under thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters. These wool waving, waving criminals are covering tree branches and lamp posts with small jerseys and scarves under the cover of darkness. Police say the littered, the littered activities of the gang are illegal because their woolly crimes are being done on public property without permission. The popularity of the, woolly, the wool and graffiti is growing and more and more public objects are being wrapped up every night. But the problem is growing. Please say and warn that if the midnight knitters aren't caught soon, every tree, lamppost and traffic light in the country will be warmly dressed against the cold. The problem is spinning out of control. They're a close-knit group of dyed-in-the-wool criminals. We are stitching together a case, but it's not seamless. There is no real pattern to the crimes. A police spokesman said today, So far, the criminal knitters have escaped arrest and continued to pull the wool over the eyes of both the public and the police. We go now to a secret location with our investigative reporter, Shintan, who has an exclusive interview with one of the Midnight Knitters gangs. Thank you, Deb. Debbie, I'm Shantan and joining me in the top secret location as a member of the Midnight Knitters Gang. Hello X and Y and thanks for joining us. So what led you into the dark underworld of knitted graffiti? Because I'm a gangster and I like to knit. And because I want to. Do you see yourself as a criminal? You. Because I steal Granny's knitting needles. Yeah, I do. Because I put knitting on new things. Gets people pretty angry at me. Apart from trees, lampposts and traffic lights, what else would you like to graffiti with your wallets? Cows. Because they need to respect me. I need to put on some dogs, cats, maybe even fish. fish. What will you say yourself in the future? Knitting for everybody. Knitting for the people, you... Thanks for your time, X and Y, of the Midnight Knitters gang. We now go over to Debbie. Thanks, Shintan. Now we have a word from our super correspondent in the field. Super Gran. Now to Fiona with the weather. 
Thank you, Debbie, and good evening, New Zealand. Let's have a look at the, tomorrow's weather. Starting in the far north in Kaitaia, look out for some pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. Moving down to Auckland, there will be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions. But those are the conditions, and you'll just have to accept them. There will be no weather at all for the Bay of Plenty. It's taking a short holiday, but it's expected to be back by the weekend. In Napier and Hastings, the weather will sometimes be changeable and sometimes not. We have really no idea what will happen there. In the Taranaki, a mild desperation brings with a, a very dull day with no highlights at all. It will be overcast and gloomy all morning, but things should cheer up by the evening. So don't worry, everything will be fine. Wellington will have another capital day there. There will be no wind at all, the, and the day conditions will be so pleasant they'll actually be ex extreme. In the top of the South Island, in Kaitukora, <laughs> can expect to have a good day meeting friends for lunch, going for a swim and reading the newspaper. But try to stay indoors as the weather will just be terrible. A real mix for Christchurch, which will have some unreasonable rainfall and uh, some sensible wind, moderate thunderstorms and some very angry snow. And in the lower south, the Needham will be frosty, cold and unfriendly until late morning when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everybody likes the sun. Oh, that's all from me. Remember, if it's raining outside, that's the weather for you. Good night, New Zealand. Now it's back to the news desk with Debbie and Aaron. Thanks, Fiona. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you've enjoyed this evening's broadcast. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Until then... I'm Debbie. And I'm Aaron. No, I'm Debbie. You're Aaron. Oh, right, yeah, I'm Aaron. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen... Roll the camera. Okay. okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have featured an interview with a very peculiar looking gentleman. Scene one, take one. Two.